Looking at market headlines this week, it was hard to avoid being caught up in the panic. Shares in Apple, the world's most valuable company, tumbled 8% in just over a day's trading after all. Same happened to European car makers, while luxury goods group LVMH dropped by 11%. Any company exposed to China was pretty much bound to suffer as investors were consumed by fear that its exchange rate was going to continue to devalue. But that was a fear which at least partially evaporated when the country intervened to support the currency and then held a rare press conference to say that the renminbi had fallen enough. But while the headlines looked worrying and shares did indeed wobble, the US stock market failed to break out of the range it's been stuck in for six months, the narrowest range for such a long period in history going all the way back to 1926. And the shaded area here, hard to make out, but that shows the range that it's been in for just over six months, and that's only just more than 4% from the high to the lows. Uh, hit there and came close to uh, at the end of July. Now the markets basically sailed through what could be seen as the biggest shift in a currency regime since the creation of the euro, as well as all the kerfuffle about whether Greece would be booted out of the single currency and wild swings in views on whether the Fed is shortly going to raise rates. The second biggest three-month swing in the dollar in 20 years happened in that period as well, a huge 12% move, but had little effect on stocks, while the sharp rise in bond yields of the spring was also basically ignored. Now, this level of calm seems rather eerie. The question is, does it signal complacency on the part of investors in the US? A look back at history offers a little bit of reason for caution. This line in blue here shows the gap from the high to the low over the same number of trading days going back to 1926. Basically, that's this range here as a percentage then applied uh, to a long time period. I should say that until 1957, when the S&P 500 was created, this uses the 90 stock composite index. Now, sometimes the narrow ranges look quite significant. This is the current level. The next narrowest after that was uh, for six months in 1965, just a year before a painful bear market. Uh, it's hard to make out on the, um, uh, on the scale here. This is on a log scale, but the S&P 500 in red here. Uh, in 65, you can see shortly afterwards, you've got this um, sharp downturn, um, but it's, it's reasonably hard to tell because, of course, it's so compressed on such a long range chart. There was a similarly tight range again in 2006 and 1972. Both of those were a year before very serious stock market crashes. So all of that does seem to suggest that perhaps we might uh, think that there's a bit too much complacency here. On the other hand, the market was basically on hold in a tight trading range for six months in 1992 and 1993 as well. Now, while 1994 is remembered as a terrible time because bonds bombed after a surprise rate hike, shares actually didn't do too badly that year. And they then set off, of course, on a storming bull run for the rest of the 90s. Now, what's definitely true is that there's been at least a pause in the steady rise of stocks, which have been going on since the euro panic was resolved in 2012. Now, given that the US is the most expensive of the developed world's major markets and its companies have profit margins close to record highs, easy to see why investors might be in wait-and-see mode. Uh, again, it's hard over such a long period to make out the, rate, the, the steadiness of the advance, but it really was a very steady advance until the recent flattening off in the index. If we now have the economy accelerate uh, in the next year or so, and revenue growth finally start to come through and to boost profits, then perhaps shares can break out above the top of the range they've been stuck in. But if sales stay flat, then the best hope is to buy safe dividend yielding shares and just keep your fingers crossed that the bottom of the trading range holds.